Welcome back, my little animals. If you are new to this channel, hi, welcome. My name is Anitel Muniz, aka Ani. And today I am actually going to be showing you guys how to achieve this look today. I did want to go ahead and film something a little bit earlier because I know people like to get ready for Thanksgiving and they're cooking and they're cleaning and they just don't want to put too much thought into it. So I'm just going to do this early for you guys. I know. I know. You're welcome. You'll appreciate me in a couple days or so. Just say, Just say. So, when you guys are cooking and cleaning and doing all of the above, just watch this video. We'll get you there. Relax. Everything's going to be fine. The food, the turkey, the everything will be delicious. Guaranteed. Because it's food. And food is always delicious. Mm, sometimes but your stuff is going to be good. Anyways, okay, let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm first going to be grabbing is my NYX HD Studio Photogenic Eyeshadow Base, which is basically an eyeshadow primer. This is what it looks like. You can honestly use any type of like eyeshadow primer you'd like. This is just the only one that I am currently trying to like use up. We just went ahead and primed the eyes. So today I am going to be using my Morphe 350M palette. This is what it looks like. I thought this was just like the perfect shade for any type of fall looks or just like really warm colors that you want to do. This is actually a really good one. So we're using that guy today. I'm going to start off by grabbing a fluffy brush like this and we're going to start off with a transition shade just because we wanted to blend out nicely when we put the rest of the colors onto our eyes. So our transition shade that I picked out for this look is going to be this one. We're just going to be placing it all over our crease. And you don't have to be super neat with this. You just want it to be there. And the goal when it comes to this is that you really want to like get a nice light coat all over that section. When I say section, I mean the crease. Perfect. So you see how it's just like everywhere, that's what we want. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take a an angled brush. This is what it looks like. Well, like a small angled brush like so. And next I'm gonna be grabbing this shade right here. We're just going to be packing it all over the corner of our eye. And we want this just in the corner of the eye because once we blend it, it's going to rise. It's going to push the color going upwards and we still want like that nice transition shade there. So once we start blending, it's just automatically going to start moving itself where we actually want it to be. And then once we have the color all packed in, that's when we're gonna go ahead and start blending. For the blending portion, you do want like a really nice fluffy blending brush, like so. And your blending brushes should always, always be clean whenever you're gonna be blending because you don't want any like other colors that you were once using on your eyelid just because we already placed the colors that we want on our eyes. So just keep it basic for the most part before we get extra. So we're literally just gonna be blending it back and forth, kind of like windshield wiper motions. And blending shouldn't take you too long. So now once we have these colors blended in, I'm going to be using the same brush that we use to place the red color onto our lids and I'm going to start using a deeper 
color, so it's not just going to be a bunch of red on our eyelids. We're going to start using this shade right here. Place it right in the corner. Then I'm going to use the same fluffy brush that we were using before. And I'm just going to be wiping it all over the lid. Then for this portion, I'm just going to go ahead and blend it all. We're basically going to be focusing more on the transition shading parts. So more into the crease and we're just going to be going back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and grab the Stila Kitten Karma. This is like a glitter shadow. Let me show you what it looks like. It's really cute packaging actually. And for this guy, it comes with a small applicator like this. And you're literally just going to be placing this all over your lid. I'm just going to do it like halfway. So see how I placed it in the inner corner and then just slightly finish like towards the middle. I'm just going to be doing the same thing on the other side. And once you have that situated, you're going to let it dry for just a bit. And then once the glitter has dried, we're just going to go ahead and go back to the palette. So this time I'm going to be using this type of brush. It's kind of like a small, kind of like a small little fluffy brush. It's very small. It's very precise. It's, it's kind of like a detailed brush. So going back to the palette, I'm going to be grabbing this color now. It's a little bit of a lighter orangey red what we were using earlier. I'm just going to be focusing this like on this portion close to the glitter. Using the same brush, I'm going to be grabbing the darkest color that we used earlier just on the corner of our eyes. I'm just packing this in as so. And I'm going to be grabbing my fluffy brush again. It's nice and soft on the corners. Just as so. I love saying that just as so. Just because I said so. Just as so. You reap what you sow. <laughs> okay, I gotta stop. So yeah, we're just blending out the sides of the shadow so it doesn't look too just like there you know there's like glitter everywhere okay so grabbing the little fluffy tiny detailed brush i'm gonna go ahead and grab a transition shade so let's go with this little orangey it's like a rusted pumpkin okay just gonna go right under the eye that since we since we used all these colors on our eyes the entire time we didn't really wash this brush or like cleanse it so we kind of just did it all without having to grab more color so that's one of the tricks that I like to that I like to recommend whenever you're doing your eyeshadow is just use the same brush that you pretty much did a little detail works on and use it right under your your eye. That way you don't have to keep on grabbing like all these shades and it's just already on your brush. Then I'm gonna be grabbing the blending brush and just sweeping back and forth just to make sure it's all like diffused. I'm gonna place some mascara. So right now I'm not like I don't have a go-to mascara. For the moment, I'd say. I've never been too crazy about mascaras just because if I do end up using false lashes, 
it doesn't really make a difference. So right now I'm just using the Laura Mercier mascara. And once all the lashes are coated with the mascara, I'm going to be placing falsies on top. Perfect, so now that we have the lashes on, so starting off with, with the rest of my face, I am using the rest of my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. And I did make a review on this the other day. It's a pretty good primer for the most part. I am finally almost out of it. So that way I can see what else there is out there and make a review on it. Because as you know, the beauty industry is always evolving like every single month. So I'm just placing this all over my face. I'm not really precise with this just because it has like, it feels like some, it feels like I'm putting on some black, basically. And if you do notice, there is a little bit of redness around my nose. That is hormones. Just because one. It happens to everybody that is a female, born a female. Alright, so once we have all the primer set into our skin, then I'm gonna go ahead and use foundation. And as always, I'm gonna be using my Holy Grail, the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I am in the shade Patagonia. I'm just gonna go ahead and start buffing this in. I have used plenty of foundations just because when I did work at Ulta I was in the prestige section using like everything to anything and recommending like certain things for certain skin types and just so on and so forth and from everything that I've played with and everything I've used and was given and just everything that had to do with makeup pretty sure I've gotten my hands on it at one point so everything that I use currently is like my go-to and this foundation is so good because it doesn't break me out and it doesn't feel heavy on my skin at all and it covers everything like a breeze but it still looks like your skin is what I like because I personally, I like makeup, but I don't like makeup to look like just a mask, if that makes sense. Like, I like it to look like the rest of my skin because I don't have bad texture on my skin. Therefore, when I do use makeup, it looks like airbrushed. So I want my makeup to actually look like skin because I don't tech, I don't really have bad skin. Like I've had bad skin before, that's just horrible, but I don't have bad skin anymore. So like I said, you want your makeup to really emphasize like what you already have. That's what it's used for, it's basically just to like emphasize your natural beauty that you've already had. So when I do make these like tutorials and stuff, I want you guys to learn and I want you guys to like be creative with it and because it is a form of art, don't just think of it as like, oh it's just vanity. Like it's not just vanity. It is art because you're literally like I don't want to say painting your face but you are using plenty of colors and certain techniques and things like that in order to create what you want. You're basically your masterpiece. So yeah, I would say this foundation is kind of like full. It's not... Uh, I wouldn't... I mean, I guess you can make a full coverage. I think just because I didn't really use a lot, it's more for just like evening me out more than covering is what I use this foundation for, but I'm sure if you like really pack it on, 
It would be a full foundation, full coverage foundation. Now for it, it's kind of, kind of like of an even medium coverage. It's not too. It's not like the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation of that stuff is like concrete on your face like that. I will never personally use that foundation just because to take it off is a pain in the butt. I personally would recommend like if you really want an all even like face and if you're doing it for photography reasons I would recommend to like buff it into your your ears and everything but I'm not gonna do that today because one my hair is gonna be down and I still need to do my hair so I'm not gonna put foundation into my I'm not gonna put foundation on my ears that's just doing a little bit too much in my opinion so yeah this is literally what I used on my face like it's not even a lot that is it oh that's one of my tricks that I do whenever I'm doing my makeup is that I always use like post-it notes to do my makeup just because it's like okay I'm done and I don't have foundation like all over my hands and it's everywhere so that's what I do I know People are gonna like come at me for environmentally like unfriendly uses or whatever. But I use recycled post-its, okay? Okay. So then once we have our foundation on and once our skin is pretty much like nicely even out, I like to go on with contour. This I only do if I'm actually gonna be like doing my makeup makeup. So for example, Thanksgiving. We're gonna be contouring because you know I'm gonna inhale everything like Kirby. It is what it is. I enjoy food very much, and if we're gonna be picking out, we might as well look good doing it. So, I'm gonna grab my Anastasia Cream Contour. I know people have like mixed, mixed thoughts on this. I personally like it just because it has the perfect undertones for me. And I'm literally, as you can see, I'm literally using where my face naturally contours. I'm just placing it there to bring more depth into your face because if you think about it, you just like evened out your entire face and now you look like a little moon face, you know? And we're not trying to be a moon face. We're trying to look like ourselves, just... I wouldn't say better, but just a little bit extra. And I like to like stipple it. A brush that I'm using is a Real Techniques brush. It's a correcting brush. I think I bought this like in a pack of four or something. And it might look kind of like weird and not blend it out, but it's okay because that's what we want right now. We're more just focusing it on the outer parts of our face just to really bring the warmth back in. Covering the same color and just really focusing it on the outer parts of our face. So I brought the warmth back without it being too much. So we still look like ourselves. We just don't look like just like a little moon face. And grabbing the same color, I'm gonna bring it along the jaw. Since the jaw is already pretty like cut, I mostly just use this just to really blend out the foundation and the rest of your face. Well, the rest of your body, just because ever since I was little, I don't know why. But my face is so much lighter than my body. I have no idea why. 
I think it's because my mom might have just put so much sunscreen on my face, but she just like got lazy with the body. I don't know, but that's just the way my my skin is. So once we already did like bring the warmth back into the face, kind of I'd say like technically contouring, we're gonna go ahead and start using my Holy Grail concealer, which is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This is in the color Light 2.75. I like to do three strokes right in the inner corner. Uh, just a little bit more. I'm using my Real Techniques brush. This is the buffing brush. I'm just going to go ahead and blend it. Now when I do this portion, I like to push and drag. Uh, I basically like to keep the concealer more into like the inner part and just like sweep it out. And then I like to place it along the sides of my nose just because I, like I said, if you're born a female due to just being a female, <laughs> you're gonna get red around the nose, which is completely normal. It's just due to your hormones, yada, yada, yada. And just to be a little extra, put some right there. On the sides of your mouth, and a crucita porque eres santita. Everything is nicely blended. And once we have that in place, I like to go ahead and structure the nose a bit. So for those of you who don't know, I grew up a, a tomboy. And when you grow up a tomboy, you scrape your knees, you run into things, you, long story short, you get hurt a lot. Just because you're not, you're not a guy, but you play just as rough as the guys. So yeah, as a kid, I used to play softball, and of course, I got hit in the face with a huge softball. Yeah, and as you can, you probably can't tell. You can, I guarantee you cannot tell when you see me like in person. But on camera or anything, there's like a slight and there's like a slight dent into the way that my nose is because I broke it. And at the time, nobody thought that I broke it. Like my parents were just like, oh, just put ice on it. And I'm over here like trying not to cry because I was told not to cry. <laughs> so I'm over here like with my broken nose at the age of like nine. And my parents just said, oh, you're fine. Well, my dad said, oh, you're fine. But then once my mom saw me, she's just like, what the heck? And I'm just like, I don't, um, I don't know, what did that tell you? And they, she thought like they had, <laughs> she thought they put me into like MMA or something. Because my dad probably would do that. Like I was, I was that kid. I was that little girl. I wasn't into my little pony. I wasn't into Barbies. I was into like baseball, hockey, soccer, you name it, I I played it. So when it comes to my nose, there's like a certain way that I have to contour <laughs> because my nose is completely broken and it was just never fixed. And I don't think I'll ever want to fix it just because the first time I broke it, it hurt. So I personally, I don't think I would fix it because you have to re-break it to align it again. And I'm, I'm just not about that life. You know, like I went through it once. I don't really want to go through it again. So yeah, that's just the way it is. Thankfully, you cannot notice it in person. On camera, you can probably pick it up super easily and pass this out. But in person, you can't, so. There's that. So what I like to do is 
bake once we're done with our foundation or concealer and I just sort of like our cream products in general. What I'm going to be using is my Laura Mercier translucent powder. I'm going to just be placing it into the cap. And one of the sponges that I just like fell in love with and I just personally cannot live without is this Eco Tools like sponge. It's actually a really, really good sponge. It's pretty dense. So I like using that side to pack it into my under eye area. And this side kind of just like to clean up. Like if you want to chisel out your, your cheekbones even more, I would recommend using this side. So I'm going to be using this shorter dense and you want to pick up as much powder like that. Press it into the cap with your sponge and then you're just going to look up. And I personally just to, like to do it in the inner corner part. I don't like to drag it all the way up because I like the highlight to look. I like it to. I like my skin to look like butter. <laughs> Long story short, we're just gonna be placing it in the corners like that. We're gonna be letting it sit there for a minute or two. And so put some around my nose. And if you want to, just to set the forehead, you can do that as well. That's typically where I get oily. I do have an oily T-zone, so it's actually a good idea for me to set my forehead. Which, if you don't know what an oily T-zone means, it means where you produce natural oils on your skin. And mine is in the center of my, my face. I haven't tried something in actually quite a long time it is using a liquid highlighter so I picked this guy up this is the cover FX custom enhancer drops this is in the shade moonlight it looks like this and it's so pretty so I haven't used a liquid highlight in such a long time so this is gonna be an experiment for me. Don't judge me. I am trying, okay? I'm just gonna be grabbing this like, I this is the same brush that I used to do the cream contour. So I'm just gonna be stippling a little bit on this brush. I'm gonna just stippling a little bit on the highest point of my cheeks. Okay, that's really pretty. I wasn't quite sure how this would actually work out just because we do have powder on our face right now. Okay, now that we baked our face, I'm gonna go ahead and use brush to dust away powder that we currently have. I'm gonna be using one of my BH Cosmetic brushes. I'm just dusting away the baking okay so once we're done with the baking once we're done with just everything that's liquid and creams on our face so that's when we go ahead and go in with our powders so we're gonna grab a little bit of the Narsa Puna bronzer and just place it where we place the contour and this is just gonna reinforce that but enough where it doesn't look like muddy and nasty. And for blush, I'm gonna be using my Lorac Spectra. This is a buildable matte blush. So don't go too crazy with it because it will look kind of out there. And I like to, since my cheekbones are naturally just like pretty up there, they're high for no reason. Complements my facial structure is if I cut it this way and then just kind of rise it up a bit, like a natural flush of color without it looking too out there. Now we're just gonna go ahead and finish off the face 
with our highlighter. And I'm just using one of my Wet n Wild brushes. This is a highlighting brush. As you can see, it's not super, super dense, but it's still enough where we can still place things with precision. I'm gonna be using one of my favorite highlighters, believe it or not. This is Benefits Cookie Highlighter. I love this highlighter just because it's super creamy. It has like a creamyish formula, but it's a powder, if that makes sense. It's just something you have to get your hands on and just play with it yourself. You will fall in love. So I'm just going to be dusting a little bit. And this is a nice clean brush, so you're really going to get to see like the undertones of this highlighter. Goldeny champagne color to it. So this would actually look really good on people who have olive skin tones. Right here to here. So just that little section right there. You don't want to bring it too far down just because then it's going to emphasize things that, depending on your nose structure, mine is pretty decently shaped for my face, I'd say. I don't know, I'm pretty confident about my nose, besides the fact that it's broken. But just for today, I am going to be placing a little bit on the tip of the nose. So I would say like the key to highlight is really placing it, is the placement. Because if you don't place it in the right place, it's just going to look like a stroby mess. Which I don't recommend for people if you are new to makeup, I don't recommend to go highlighter crazy because you will look like tin foil, and that's not a cute look. But as you can see, the way that we place the highlight on the cheek and the way that we're placing the highlight on the brow bone, it's all in sync. So if I turn this way, it like glistens all together, which that is what you want in a highlight. So what I ended up using on my lips was Coffee and Kissy by Morphe. This is the way that it looks. And I thought it's just like matched with everything without it looking like too much. So that was what we opt for today. And if you want to add a little bit more color, you can go ahead and use a lip gloss what I'm placing is a little bit of highlighter just gonna go ahead and do my hair and then you guys will see me in my full awe oh. <laughs> there's like a pelo and it's bothering me Okay, no sé, there we go.